Lesson 24, a summary overview. The message of Bible prophecy for believers is that Jesus will triumph and we will win in the end. Key scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have learned from God's word that when those of us who are Christians die, our spirits never lose their consciousness. Philippians 1, 21 through 23. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. And 2 Corinthians 5, 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Instead, our fully conscious spirits are immediately ushered into the presence of Jesus by his holy angels. Luke 16, 22. That, uh, that verse is uh, talking about when the, when the beggar died and he went into Abraham's bosom. That's what that verse is. I forgot to put it in here, but that's what it, that's what it is. Our spirits are clothed, clothed in an intermediate spirit body and remain in the Lord's presence until he appears for his church at the time of the rapture. At that time, he brings our spirits with him, resurrects our bodies, reunites our spirits with our bodies, and then glorifies our bodies, perfecting them and rendering them eternal. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. I think we ought to really put this, some emphasis here on this verse, that, uh, on this, what Ben just got through reading. Uh, we want to notice the different things that's going to happen. He brings our spirit with him when he comes. He resurrects our bodies too. He re, re, reunites our spirits with our bodies and then glorifies our bodies. So there's a lot going on there, ain't there? Here's how it reads in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be, to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort, comfort one another with these words. We return with him to heaven in our glorified bodies where we are judged for our works to determine our degrees of rewards. 2 Corinthians 5, 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. When this judgment is completed, we participate in a glorious wedding feast to celebrate the union of Jesus and his bride, the church. Revelation 19, 7 through 9. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called 
unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. I'd like to talk just to speak just a minute here. Said for the fine linen, that verse number eight, verse number eight, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. How many knows what righteousness there is talking about? Second Corinthians chapter five twenty one. For he was made sin who knew no sin who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of Christ in him righteousness of God in him so it's his righteousness right mm -hmm. amen witnesses of glory at the conclusion of the feast we burst from the heavens with Jesus, returning with him to the earth in glory. Revelation 19, 14. And the armies which were in the heavens followed him up on white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. We witness his victory at Armageddon. We shout hallelujah as he is crowned King of kings and Lord of lords. And we revel in his glory as he begins to reign over all the earth from Mount Zion and Jerusalem. Zechariah 14, 1 through 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be, shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Now this is talking about the battle of Armageddon. All right. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall be shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountain the mountains shall reach into Azel. Yea, ye shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And as the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that, that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. In Revelation 19, 17 through 21. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God. that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. 
And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These, these both were it cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword pierced, proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. For a thousand years we participate in that reign, assisting him with the instruction, administration, and enforcement of his perfect laws. Daniel seven thirteen through 14. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His domain is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And verse 27. And the kingdom that and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. In Revelation 20, verses 1 through 6. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having this key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And uh, he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and afterward that he must be loosed for a little season." And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads for art in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Praise the Lord. We see the earth regenerated and nature reconciled. Isaiah 11, 6 through 9. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the, fa and hit the, the fatlings together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the suckling child shall play on the hold of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockroach den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the water covereth the sea. We see holiness abound and the earth flooded with peace, righteousness, and justice. Micah 4, 1 through 7. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountains and the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow into it. 
And many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of God of Jacob, and he will... And he will. Oh, yeah, yeah, here it is. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his path. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall set every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. For all people will walk every one in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. In that day, saith the Lord, will I assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that have, uh, that, uh, have I afflicted. And I will make her that halteth a remnant, and her that was cast afar off a strong nation, and the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. At the end of the millennium, we witness the release of Satan to deceive the nations. We see the truly despicable nature of the heart of man as millions rally to Satan in his attempt to overthrow the throne of Jesus. But we will shout hallelujah again when we witness God's supernatural destruction of Satan's armies and see Satan himself cast into hell where he will be tormented forever. Revelation 20, verse 7 through 10. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of, of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone before the beast and the false prophet and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. We will next witness the great white throne judgment when the unrighteous are resurrected to stand before God. We will see perfect holiness and justice in action as God pronounces his terrible judgment upon the, this congregation of the damned who have rejected his gift of love and mercy in Jesus Christ. Revelation 20, verse 11 through 13. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from wh whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Jesus will be fully vindicated as every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Then the unrighteous will receive their just reward as they are cast into hell. Revelation 20, verse 14 through 15. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Witnesses of a new creation. We will then witness the most spectacular fireworks display in all of history. 
we will be taken to the new Jerusalem, the eternal mansion prepared by Jesus for his bride. And from there we will watch as God renovates this earth with fire, burning away all the filth and pollution left by Satan's last revolt. 2 Peter 3, 12 through 13. Looking far and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Just as the angels rejoiced when God created the universe, we will rejoice as we watch God superheat this earth and reshape it like a hot ball of wax into the new earth, the eternal earth, the paradise where we will live forever in the presence of God. Revelation 21, 1 through 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and he and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write those things, write for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the waters of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. You want me to keep on reading? No, I'm just trying to find, I'm at the very top of that 115, right? What a glorious moment it will be when we are lowered to the new earth inside the fabulous new Jerusalem. Revelation 21, verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. God will come down from heaven to dwell with us. Revelation 21, 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. He will proclaim, Behold, I make all things new. Revelation 21, 5. And he sat upon the throne, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these things are true and faithful. We will see God face to face. Revelation 22, verse 4. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forts. He will wipe away all our tears. Revelation 21, 4. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Death will be no more. We will be given new names. Revelation 2, 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name, which no man knoweth, saving, saying, He that received it. And we will exist as individual personalities encased in perfect bodies. Revelation 3.21. Philippians 3.21. What? Philippians, okay. Who shall change our vile bodies that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. 
and we will grow eternally in knowledge and love of our infinite creator, honoring him with our talents and gifts. To say the least, these are promises of God that should give us hope. We should be able to get excited about them and desire to share them with those who do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. <clears throat> Quotation. A continual looking forward to the eternal world is not, as some modern people think, a form of escapism or wishful thinking, but one of the things a Christian is meant to do. It does not mean that we are to leave the present world as it is. If you read history, you will find that the Christians who did most for the present world were just those who thought most of the next. The apostles themselves were set on the on foot the conversion good grief <laughs> the apostles themselves who set on foot the conversion of the roman empire the great men who built up the middle ages the english evangelicals who abolished the slave trade all left their mark on earth precisely because their minds were occupied with heaven it is since christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they have become so ineffective in this Aim at heaven, and you will get earth thrown in. Aim at earth, and you will get neither. C.S. Lewis and Mere Christianity. <clears throat> okay. Sure. I'm not sure where it's kind of here. On page six. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. During that millennial reign, thousand years, right? And, and, and talk about how they're still going to be enemies of God, right? But they're not going to be able. To, they're going to be pirates. They're not going to be able to do anything about it. Right. It's kind of like the believer is right now. We're walking in the name of our Lord God Almighty, capital G O D. But you know, in a sense. Well, during that millennial reign, you got to remember, he said, he'll rule with the rod of iron. There you go. So he won't, there won't be nothing that will escape. Right. If they, you know, they're going to pay. And then at the very end, they're going to move to the devil's side. But I, I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and that kind of brings clarity to how, when Satan is released, how people turn away. Because I always thought that it was only Christians too, and it's like, yeah. how does that happen? Right. But exactly. makes a lot more sense. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna do the questions. Yeah. Question number one.